This is Black Woman CEO. Welcome to the only podcast dedicated to giving you the raw and real experiences of successful Black women entrepreneurs. Yes, girl, we're talking about the behind the scenes strategies of what it takes to increase in your profit, power, and purpose. I am your host, Kwani Shibane, and I invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy today's show. Hey there, hey there. This is Kwanisha Green of Black Women CEO. Happy to come to you today to continue our series on how to grow your business. And today we are talking about how to increase your income. Well, I'm so excited to be back talking about this because here's the thing. If you're not growing your business, your business is dying. Who wants a dying business? <laughs> Right, because one thing I know about you, if you're hanging out here at Black Women CEO, is that you have dreams, right? You want to, if you're not already, work for yourself, like work from anywhere, work from home. I choose to work from home. That's my anywhere. You may want to travel around the world. You also want to own your time, right? You want to own your time. You want to live on your own terms. And when you go to the website, you'll learn the five core things that we talk about and cover in the challenges as well as you'll see the praise for Mint for More. I think as of today, this would be like our fourth round in 2020 because the whole goal is to help you find clients. So put more clients, <laughs> which is the key to you having more revenue, right? And having a bigger impact in your business. It's all about helping you to increase your profit, power, and purpose within seven days. So you're going to learn five must-haves to find clients now, five powerful mindsets for more clients in cash, the fastest and simplest path to cash and clients, how to build a premium offer. Cause I don't want you to just have any type of business. I want you to get paid top dollar and attract high end clients. So you'll know how to build a premium offer. That's exactly what high end clients want and need and therefore will buy. And the last major topic that we talk about is how to talk. So high end clients will invest. That's all about the sale. <laughs> so money, money, money. If you know that you need to make some more sales and we'll talk about that and in increasing your income. But let me tell you why this series is important. Like I said, if your business isn't growing in general, it's dying. But particularly, that's why we got to talk about how to increase your impact and bring in consistent clients, right? And revenue and starting to hit this higher goals. But particularly for Black women, this is important because if you're not aware of the statistics, and this is the latest statistics as of 2019, a report that was commissioned by American Express called the State of Women-Owned Businesses. And it shows that average gross revenue for Black women-owned businesses, this is in the United States, was $24,000 a year. Now, the last census data, which unfortunately is older, but it's the last census on small businesses show that, so the 2012 data was that our average gross revenue for Black women-owned businesses was $27,753 a year. So it's going down, people, or went down to $2,400. So let me know this, like we just said, when you think about what you ultimately are looking to desire, right? Um, and what you're desiring for your life, like what a business will allow you to achieve, this whole working from anywhere, the owning your time, leaving your nine to five, um, living on your own terms, living your legacy, would $24,000 a year allow you to achieve that? Would it allow you to achieve that? And that's before taxes. So let me know. Do you feel like, oh yeah, that's perfect. That's just enough. Now, I know if you're like, well, I want to keep my job and I'm doing this, you know, parallel entrepreneur as a side hustle, another 20K may be like, oh, I'm good. That's cool. But for those of us who want to do this full time, and I work full time, I know that 20 thousand dollars coming in wouldn't allow me to have the full life that I desire. So that is why it's important for us as Black women to really learn these important skills. Now, if you don't know me, so let me introduce myself. Like I said, I'm the founder and CEO of Black Women CEO, Kwanisha Greens. A lot of people call me Coach Q. So you'll hear that in our community. Um, and I'm the confidence strategist for Black women CEOs, really helping Black women experts, you experience experts, uh, those people who know they have expertise, I want to say even experienced entrepreneurs, we can put it that way, know how to increase their confidence, right? And elevate their confidence and also how to take charge of their owning power. And one thing that's really great about Black Women CEO is that we're truly one of the only businesses that is geared towards Black women that's combining research and proven strategies to help you to grow that earning power. So 
you know, we are in our fifth year right now. You could say we're going into six. We turned five in May 2020. You can even say after five years of doing this work, I have even the anecdotal research of what are these common things from women around the globe? Because we're a global organization that we're seeing that are impacting Black women and impacting how they're able to show up consistently. So yes, there are macro issues like bias and, you know, racism, wage inequality that impacts how we can even invest in our businesses, because that's what most entrepreneurs are doing, self-investment. There's also self-biases that get in the way, like fear, perfectionism. Let me know if any of these resonate with you. Overwhelm. Sometimes it's the strong Black woman syndrome. I like to call it where we think that we have to only depend on ourselves. So these are some of the things that we begin to debunk here at Black Women CEO through culturally relevant coaching and training, right? All in the effort to serve you, to help you to increase your cash and clients, but mostly to get that life that you know is meant for you. You know you're meant for so much more and even so much more than you know that we've been taught to believe. I love that's one thing one of my Black woman millionaires mentor said. She was like, you deserve so much more than you've been taught to believe. And that always something that really stuck with me in that way. So that is why we're doing this training, because even in this larger context, we need to know this as Black women, because by both race and gender, right? So whether you organize it by race, gender, or the combination of those factors, we're in the lowest tier when it comes to those average gross revenue. So it's, you know, it's almost like, I want to say a social justice cause, right? Because this is our economic empowerment as a community of why we need to have these skills and even have the mindset, the strategies, right? The inner work that we need to do, not just the outward work. So we'll talk about a combination <laughs> of those two today. So this is why this is important. And that's a little bit about me. Black Women CEO, over the last five years, we have touched over 20,000 women. I just count that as the Folks who've given us our email address, although our platform is more than that at 32,000 like followers and likes and all these things, we Instagram, Facebook, <laughs> LinkedIn, um, as far as our reach. Then on that time, we've had close to 400 customers and clients. And then at a very high level, people who haven't invested sometimes multiple four figures, sometimes up to five figures to do private coaching with us and to be in our masterminds. We've had close to like 75 people. And also that I, I personally coach, even when I was a business coach with other actually premium organizations serving Black women. So that's just to give you some context when you're like, why should I listen to her? You know, that's why I can talk about what I talk about. I'm highly qualified. And then I have credentials, right? I have a master's in social work where I spent my master's thesis studying Black women. I'm a certified master life coach and all these other things, right? So I even have credentials and that kind of stuff. That supports and uh, what with certificates, organization behavior management, my last full time job from five years ago, right? I was a co executive director of a statewide nonprofit organization. So I bring all these experiences with this focus on Black women to really help us to advance, right? Like I said, to ultimately to help you elevate your confidence as well as having the skills, know how to elevate your earning power. So let's talk about how to increase your income. Now, here's the thing. As a CEO, you have two primary roles. One is it to drive the vision. And that's when you think about impact. So if you haven't watched that, go to the units tab in our Facebook group, the Black Women CEO Facebook group, and you'll see the recording of part one when we talk about how to increase your impact. Because ultimately, that's your vision and mission, the larger impact that you want to see in the world, but also now. So we talk about how to impact people now <laughs> and later. And then the other part of your role as a CEO is to drive revenue. Your business is not a charity. It's not a church mission, even though, like I said, we, we feel that it may be connected to our deeper purpose. Your business has to be making money. Revenue and income is the lifeblood of your business. And it really should be like increase your revenue because we're talking about business revenue, which if you're bringing in enough revenue, you can eventually pay yourself <laughs> your own income. But many of us are solopreneurs, right? So a lot of times the revenue that we're bringing in on those profits after expenses is our actual income, particularly if you have an LLC or if you're a solopreneur in that way. So money is the lifeblood of your business because here's the thing, and I, I know I'm kind of really harsh when I say this, if your business isn't making money, you have an expensive hobby. And then if your business isn't generating enough money, because some of you are bringing in the two to 3K, maybe even 5K per month, the question is, is it really helping you to get to where you want to go? And that's actually number one. I'm going to talk about three things today around increasing your income. That helps me to segue 
And to number one of increasing your income is to set goals. Now, this is not about setting arbitrary goals of like, oh, I want to hit 5K because, you know, I think 60K would be nice or that's replaced my income that I'm making in my job, right? I want you to go a step bigger because here's the thing. You want to build your business around your desired lifestyle. And so to set a goal around that, (laughs) you have to sit down and figure out what does your desired life cost? So if you want to travel around the world and work from anywhere, what does it cost to live in France for a year? What does it cost to then go to Germany? Or what does it cost to work from home? And not just work from home in your circumstances now, but if you know that, say you have children, you're like, oh, I want them to go to the best private school. Well, what is the tuition for that? (laughs) If you know you want to be debt free, what is that debt right now? If you know that you want a chef, you want a nanny, you want a maid, or you want to like maybe, you know, buy your mother a home, like we can do with the four stars, buy my mother a home. Start to add these things up, this really grand desire around what you have. And here's the thing, you have a right to dream. And these things aren't out of your reach. So if you're like, I want a bigger home, I want a mini mansion, I want a big mansion, I want a pool, right? Start to add all of those things up. And then we set our business goals around that. So when I did this activity recently, I saw that for the lifestyle that I want, (laughs) that I desire when I drill down to, you know, my personal life, the contributions that I want to make, you know, how I want to be charitable, the education that I want to extend my children from here on out, where I want to live, how I want to dress, the support that I want to have, not just in my business, but in my life. And when I started to add all that up, I found out I need to be bringing in $25,000 a month to have that. So sometimes we set goals and we just like, oh, I want to make 6K. And also you got to count for taxes, right? So I even added that in, right? <laughs> so it's probably like 30K. But like it came up to like, just at least those goals right now, what I want in my life is 25K a month. So I don't expect you all to write your goals right now, but maybe share, like if you just think about what you want to bring in at a larger scale, right? When you're like, oh, if my business is at my height, Here's what I want to bring in. But then I want to encourage you to actually go ahead and do a deep dive and actually write out all these aspects of your life and see what it costs. Like, what do you need to be bringing in every month to have that? Because once you're clear on your goals, then you can start to make a plan. So if I need to make 25K a month and say my private coaching is 5K, then I know I need to be shooting to bring in five clients per month. How am I going to bring in those five clients? And I'm like, oh, if I convert three out of five calls, then that means I need to have 25 sales calls. It will impact how many sales calls do I have to have? Okay, what do I do to get that many sales calls? So when you're clear on your goals, and like I said, the goals at a higher level, it trickles down to what you need to do every day in your business. So don't just arbitrarily choose a number, choose a number that reflects your desired life. And then it drills down to, once again, how you need to show up in your business. And that is inherently increasing your income because now you're working for a different goal instead of some arbitrary goal that you don't even know if it's really going to help your life. Now, when you're starting out, you may think, oh, 25K is a lot. So yeah, maybe you are setting another goal, but I want you to dream bigger. Don't play small, dream big. Because then when you're showing up in a bigger way, when you see this higher goal, you start to become almost a different person in achieving that. Ultimately, you want to build your business around your lifestyle. Some of you have built a business because maybe you got into hustling, you were figuring things out, and then you realize, hey, I don't have a life. Or I'm working all the time. Or I don't see my family, right? I don't see my loved ones. And then we continue in that, you know, almost that habit that we created and our quality of life sinks down, right? So, you know, if you started that way, this is not a judgment, but now it's a matter of how do you change course? And the way that you change course is now thinking about, okay, what is that lifestyle that you desire in addition to how much it costs when we talk about increasing your income? And then what are you going to do to start to change course? Sometimes you can do a whole 180 in your business and shut down everything and change it. But then over time, maybe let me make some small courses because I know the goal that I have in mind right? I know the vision of that personal goal of the life I desire, but then I also know what that life is going to cost. So let me change the bit, my stuff in my business and act accordingly. So that's number one, set goals. But once again, think about the goals that are around your desired life. So essentially, what does your desired life cost, right? So that's one of the ways to 
go ahead and increase your revenue because it's going to require you to show up differently in your business as you work for what you truly want, that deeper why that you have. The second thing I want to talk to you about increasing your revenue is to begin to use value-based pricing. So to illustrate this a little bit, I want to tell you about one of my clients, Dr. Michelle. That's not her real name, just for her anonymity, but it's a real story. So Dr. Michelle joined our Black Women CEO um, Collective, which was our mastermind at the time. And she's a clinician. And other clinicians were always coming to her about asking her, how did she start her business, right? Because she had a six-figure practice. You know, how did you move into private practice? How did she did, do well? So she kind of came into our community wanting to build that part of her business. She was like, I actually want to start helping people, having them invest so that they're invested in that way. And so... You know, she really wanted to provide people with a comprehensive solution, a signature offer. That's what we advocate, right? And price it well. So, you know, we fleshed it out where she was going to do an assessment. She was going to help them with visioning exercises. She was going to give them accountability and support along the way. And I was like, okay, like we could start this out with being like a $2,500, $3,000 offer, right? As she started to get clients, ultimately she could charge way more, like sometimes five to 10K for this. And so she was like, okay, well, let me continue to work on this. And I'll check in with you more around like the outline that we created around her signature offer. And did you know, when she brought this back to me, right, she emailed me and the pricing was one fourth of what we talked about in her coaching. So instead of it being like a $2,500 offer, like I said, it could be way more than that. But a lot of times I like clients to start out at like $2,500, $3K because we sometimes also have to build our confidence around pricing. How do you feel charging 3K for an offer or 5K for an offer right now? And some of you are doing that. We also have clients who are making six figures and they don't have a problem. But often, even when those six-figure folks are starting a new service, sometimes doubt and confidence and things come in. So it's like, okay, let's ease our way, <laughs> right, with your premium offer. I reply back to her like, huh? Like, this is not what we talked about. <laughs> like, we're going to have to talk about this during our live call. And so when we got on the live call, like her response to it was like, hey, I saw what you said in the email about the investment level. And I was kind of shocked. Once again, it was like 90 days, 2,500, 3,000. But here's was the core of this issue. When we think about value-based pricing, she thought that she had to do more to make more. She thought she had to do more to make more because she added all this other stuff to it. But guess what? When I say she priced it at one fourth, She was going to do all this even more stuff. And the price was $790 that she was going to price this 90 day program at. And so she was like, Hey, I was shocked that you said that. And so even for you, I want to break this down so that you can see the full value and why that she was undercharging. And this is what I did with her. I was like, don't just take my word for it, Dr. Michelle. Like, let's sit down. (laughs) Right. So when we looked at what she was selling, right, it was seven hours of live work. That didn't include like the contact that she was going to have, like virtual emails and onboarding people or live hours. But it was like seven hours of live, like one to one for $7.97. And when we just broke that down, everybody, that came to $113 per hour. And guess what? This was way less than what she was charging in her private practice for therapy. And so then we figured out she had a seven figure goal for this service. And that for seven, well, for the 797, she would need 125 people to sign on for the total year to hit that goal. So she would have needed 127 people. Let me make sure I'm doing my math right because I have it outlined here. So for the year to hit just like a six figure goal, even for that year, she would need to sign up 125 people over the year. So that was like over 700 hours in addition to her private practice that she would have had to provide giving that number that she said. Do you all see that? And so when I asked her, hey, do you want to work an additional 700 hours this year? And when we broke that down, if we break it down by month, that was an additional about like 58, 60 hours per month in this practice. I was like, hey, do you want to do that for your 797 offer? And she said, oh, no, oh, no, that's not going to work for me, (laughs) right? That's not going to work with me. So sometimes we can just do the math, do the math of, you know, what we're charging now and what our goal is, right? Even at that higher desire. And it's like, when you think about just your time, right, you can just broke it down into your time that you're serving this, you will see that that is way too many offers. That's way too many. But say we had her six figure goal. And if she actually did it at the 3000 per offer, 
she would just need 33 people to sign up that year. And if we divide it by 12, that's about two to three clients per month if she just did it at $3,000. And I asked her like, hey, is that much more feasible for you? Even if it was still that seven hours, that's like maybe an extra 20 hours in the month. Divided by four, it's like an extra four to five hours per month as she built out the service, even if it was after $3,000. So we did that math. And then when we start getting to value-based pricing though, you don't just want to think about the quality and the, the price of your time. You also want to go a step bigger and think about what is the price of the results and outcomes that people can get around the service. So I asked her, I was like, hey, if somebody did your program from 90 days, like what could they even make in the first year? She said they could make $10,000 or even build a $100,000 practice if they do what I said. And so imagine if someone said to you, hey, you invest $25,000 and you can see a 300% return on that investment in the next three to six months. Let me know, would you do that? We can't guarantee it because there's so many factors that the results are based on, but you just know if they implement, even based on your experience or based on your other client's experience, that they have the potential to see that return when they get that knowledge and education and support, you know, would you do it? And that's really good odds. I mean, honestly, I have made three to 400% return on my investment that I've made in my education and trainings in my business. That's a great return. So as we see from Michelle's story, not only was she undercharging for her direct hours, But also she was undervaluing the worth of the problem that she would solve and the solution, right? What that solution would garner for her clients through the work that she was facilitating. And so value-based pricing is not just about the hours. It's actually starting to think, what is the value of those results and outcomes, right? And sometimes you have tangible things around numbers, like say your career coach, And you can think, okay, people do what I tell them, they can get a promotion. Or when you look at past clients, and we'll talk, we talked about that in um, increasing your impact, like how to actually see what your impact actually is. Once again, you can go back and look at that training where we went deeper into actually figuring out what your results and outcomes are, right? And sometimes it's those intangibles. What's the value of having more confidence as it relates to what you, like say you're a health coach and people feel more confident around their eating. And if they feel more confident around their eating, they lose a hundred pounds. And that extra 100 pounds may alleviate some of the ailments, right? The, the pain they have in their knee. The fact that when they go on vacation, they're out of breath and they can't walk and they have to stop every five minutes. They don't enjoy shopping. They feel um, a lack of confidence around even getting into a relationship or the current relationship is being impacted like that. Sometimes some of the value is priceless, but we can start to think about and help people realize like, what's the cost of you not investing in this service? that they can really see the larger value of what you do. And when you start to do value-based pricing, you can increase your pricing. Because once again, now your pricing is associated with the value. So one quick way to increase your revenue, (laughs) right, is using value-based pricing versus you can say time-based pricing. But the reason why I even wanted to give you sometimes of just doing the math is that math is just really accessible to us when you're just like, hey, let's break down the hours, <laughs> right? That you're even just working. Then you see like, damn, I'm only paying myself $75 an hour. I want to get paid that in my job. And once again, when I go to my lifestyle, my lifestyle says I need to be making $500 per hour, right? And so those are two ways that you can actually start to understand value-based pricing and you can instantly change your pricing. Like when I started to understand the impact of my work, And I started to see, hey, in 30 days, people were getting clients. I had clients say they were on track to replace their full-time income, right? I had people who were starting to get into six figures. And so instead of me charging that $2,500, I doubled my price into five. And then when more people were getting results at $5,000, I doubled it again to ten. Hey, sis, are you struggling to attract clients in your business? And the way this may be showing up is that you feel like your income is stalling, or you're not generating as much revenue as you can because you're wondering if people will pay you that much for your services. So here's the thing. You may be making this number one mistake that is a roadblock really to you generating consistent clients. And that mistake is that you can be seeing this as an issue or a challenge that's about business systems or simply strategy. And here's the thing that may not be it. There may be some underlying reasons common to us black women 
as to why you aren't achieving your desired results. And so that's why in this online workshop, it's a week-long workshop called Meant For More, I will be teaching you the crucial steps to attract consistent clients no matter the time, right? In both good and bad times. You know, these are strategies that I personally learned and implemented as a result of years of studying business and black women, specifically our unique leadership challenges and strengths. And yes, these have worked for others too. So I'm sharing the exact framework I use to train and coach my clients. And during the Meant for More workshop, which is a week long experience, we'll have live Q&A coaching time so that you can receive customized feedback on your most pressing questions. And so while the goal is to help you find clients now, the real crux of this workshop is to help you to increase in your profit, power, and purpose. It's not just about money. It's really about you tapping into the more, right? That more that you want for your life. And here's what Lucretia said about the Meant for More workshop. So it's Lucretia Dangerfield. She has a doctorate in education and also a licensed mental health counselor. And she says, I have been following Quanisha for a few years and I can say that the Meant for More live workshop was the bomb.com. This is the first time that I've completed a week-long training to make sure I didn't miss anything. From the action guide to the practical teaching, I walked away more empowered and ready to grow my business. So you know if it's time to grow your business, I want you to go ahead and sign up for this live workshop. You can go to www.blackwomenceolive.com to learn the full details of what we're covering over the week through five live lessons. And actually, I'm going to share them with you now. (laughs) So one, you're going to learn the five must-haves to find clients now. Then you're going to learn five powerful mindsets for more clients and cash. You're going to learn the fastest and simplest path to cash and clients. Then I'm going to teach you how to build a premium offer that's exactly what high-end clients need and want and therefore will buy. And lastly, you're going to learn how to talk so high-end clients will invest. So when you go to blackwomenceolive.com, you'll also see praise for the Mint for More workshop from more of our CEO sisters who have really benefited from this, you could say, experience, right? And so I want to invite you to come. It is at no cost. So, you know, I'm taking on the cost. And this is really about me helping you to stop (laughs) self-sabotaging. And also, once again, uncover the deeper reasons that may be impacting your profits, your cash flow, and actually earning what you deserve when it comes to your business and getting on path to living your ultimate desired life. So I can't wait to see you in the Meant for More workshop. And that kind of segues into number three, which is charge more. (laughs) So don't just charge a value. Another way to increase your income is to charge more. Because once again, that myth that you have to do more to make more, or you have to discount your services to get clients is a false reality. It is not true. So you can begin to charge more. And one of the great ways around charging more is actually you starting to invest in yourself at a high level. And seeing what does a twenty five hundred sorry twenty five hundred dollar program look like? What does a three thousand dollar program looks like? And you'll start to see like, hey, actually, I can do this, right? Or I can make my program like this. And through investing in myself, through investing in other people, so I wanted to charge a high level, so I started to actually invest in programs and coaches and mentors where you know they were asking that because it wasn't just to see what they were doing, and it wasn't about copying it. It was giving myself that own level of investment. And so, and even through that mentorship, my mentor started to say, hey, you're doing the same work I'm doing. You're having the same results and impacts. You need to be charging more. You need to be charging what I'm charging. So sometimes even to figure out how we should be charging more is putting yourself in an environment with other experience, well, people who are experienced in business and they can reflect to you like, hey, I can help you figure this out. But actually you're undercharging because let me help you figure out the value and outcome of the services. And the other part of increasing your revenue and, and doing that and investing in yourself at a high level is that you get to be in integrity. Because if you're like, hey, I want to charge someone $10,000 for services and you've never paid $10,000 for services, it's out of integrity, right? And then when you do, you know often like, what are the emotions that come up around this? How did you even figure out yourself how to pay the 10K? What was included in that program? 
So once again, you get an idea of what a premium offer looks like, what a premium experience looks like, and then you're able to actually reflect that back to yourself. Also, when you start charging more, this is another way to honor yourself and honor the other person. And here's why. Pricing is really important in the sense that pricing attracts certain people. And as far as their commitment, right? So if you really want people who are committed, then you want to price in a way that attracts people that committed, that are committed in that sense. So when you charge a low price, you may be fine, especially if say you charge for free, you're going to find people who are tire kickers, right? Who are just like, oh, let me see what it is. And then not committed to doing the work. Even if you charge $5, right? A different person will show up. Because let me know if you like me. When you pay something, you're like, oh, I'm going to show up. I pay my five or 10 bucks. But imagine when you're paying $1,000 per month for three or four months, then you really show up and do the work, right? You're committed to seeing it through. And here's the benefit of that for your business is that those are the people, once again, who do the work. Those are the people who become your testimonials. Those are the people who give you further insight of what's working and what's not working with your business. And testimonials help you to get new clients, right? Those experiences help you to get referrals when people start doing the work. So pricing is a way of honoring them because then you're calling in people who you know are going to be committed to the process, right? It's a way of honoring you because once again, that money that you're bringing in is going to help you to have your desired lifestyle and for you not to feel resentment. I mean, if you ever have done a service and you're like, I did not charge enough (laughs) for this. And like, while you may have been honored that like, oh, someone wants to be my client or this organization wants me to come talk. And then all the work that goes into it, you sitting there like, I did not get paid enough. And it's not resentment at that person. It's kind of like a self-resentment of like, why did I do this to myself? And who wants to feel resentful as they're going through their business? So charging more. I always say, hey, if you set a price and someone buys it, the next person double it. But add another $102 because it's showing you that it's a demand. And sometimes you'll increase your pricing. And I've seen this with clients. They were charging like $4.97. And then the next time they said, hey, the offer is $1,500. And people are like, okay. And you're sitting there like, really? Like they just said yes, like that easily. <laughs> and the next time you do it, you're like, hey, it's $3,000. People are like, okay, sounds great. And you're like, dang. And once again, we want to be in integrity, right? Once again, this goes to knowing that your program gets results and incomes. But when you start to charge more, and I always say double it. If you want to make more, double your prices. All you have to do is see what happens. And once again, when you know how to sell, when you know how to talk about the benefits of the work and the impact and the outcomes and how it connects to people's vision, right? So there's a sales, um, you know, knowing how to sell in that way. And sell is not about persuading, right? It's about helping people know, like, does this offer align with what you want? And do I want to work with you? Also, are you committed? Right. You'll start to see like very easily that like there are people who will pay that. So sometimes we have to take our own insecurities around pricing out of it. We have our own things of like, oh, people pay me that much or I won't pay that much or that's too much money. You can't count your other clients purse strings or even make the assumption that they don't have that much because your ideal client, your soulmate client is someone who can afford your services and believes in the value of your services. So if you ever have had a sales call and someone said like, oh, that's charging too much. I don't see the value in that. That means that you probably didn't sell it well, or they just not your ideal client. And that's okay. And so no one has ever said to me, Queen, I don't see the value. They may be like, I can't do that right now. (laughs) Right. But I see the value of what you do. So that's a whole different conversation. So if you want to see an increase in your revenue, charge more. I actually challenge you all to go double your pricing. Right, just go ahead and just double it and see what happens. But once again, one way that you can convince yourself that it's worth that is to really start to see the results and impact. And another way for you to actually build that confidence is to put yourself in an environment where you are investing in yourself at a high level. You get to experience what a high level program looks like and you get high level mentorship, right? Where that person can even help you to feel confident around what you're charging. Those are the three ways. (laughs) that you can increase your revenue, right? So number one was get clear on the vision and what you desire for your life and set your revenue goals around that. Don't just pick some arbitrary numbers. Like, oh, I just want to make 1K a month. It's like, well, is that going to get you what you want? So really think about what is the ideal life that you want? Because the goal is to build your business around this life and what does it cost? And then you use that to set your goals and your pricing because your business should be helping you to have the life that you desire, to have the impact that not only you want to have in your life. So that was um, number one in increasing your revenue. Number two is shifting to value-based pricing. 
And there's some more into that because sometimes that's packaging your service. But ultimately, the value-based pricing is truly understanding and doing the math on like, what is your time worth? And one, does you even want to get paid that amount of time? And so you start to see that you are undercharging or that you have to do way too much to hit your revenue goals because you're undercharging even for like, say, the hour of the work that you want to do. And once again, that goes into the desired life. It's like, do you want to be working an extra 700 hours a month because you're only charging, sorry, a year because you're only charging $113 per hour for your work. So you want to shift to value-based pricing where you're pricing around the result and the outcome that people are going to receive. And then another power of value-based pricing is also honoring yourself and actually pricing at a way that's going to allow your business to flourish in that way. So that was number two, price on value, not just time. And there's a sub part of that, which we didn't have time to go into heavily, is starting to package your services so you're not trading dollars for hours, right? In a way, I kind of talked about that when we did the hourly breakdown, right? So do the math and you'll start to see like, hey, this program, I got to sell way too much. I get too many clients. Because guess what? It takes the same amount of effort and time to sell a $10 product as it does to sell a $3,000 product, I promise you. So why not maximize your time and sell the $3,000 product? or service in that way. And then the third thing for increasing your revenue is charge more, just charge more. And some of the ways to do that is once again, tapping into the value of your offering. And then also being an integrity where you start to join, whether it's coaching or programs, whatever that are at a high level, because then that will help you to start to debunk that myth that you have to do more to make more. And then you get to experience a premium program and see what goes into that. So not only getting support through whatever that premium program is, but you start to get an eye on like, hey, this actually, this is what people need. I'm just going to give them what they need. We don't have to throw in all these extra things to try to justify the value, right? Like I've had coaching where I paid three hours for $5,000 and I just got recordings, right? But the coach (laughs) and her knowledge, I went on and made it had a 10K month because of it, right? So it doesn't always have to be handouts and worksheets and 20 hour courses, right? It really is about, a lot of people don't care about the process, honestly. They're just like, are you going to help me get the results and outcomes that I want? So once again, when you start to invest in yourself at a high level, you'll start to see what happens at that level and how you can either replicate that or use that to influence your business and what you do. Make sure you come back and you'll see part three of the series where we talk about how to grow your business and we will be focusing on how to increase your influence. So this is Juanisha Green signing off and I want to leave you with our motto that power is the ability to create your reality. So go forth and be powerful, sister, and I will talk to you soon. Oh girl, the episode stopped, but the party is not over. I want you to go ahead and subscribe, like, and rate this show. Leave us a comment sharing your takeaways. And when you're done with that, come on over to BlackWomenCEO.com, join our movement. And when you do that, you'll get the special invitation to join us in our community. Well, I would love to put a face to that name, girl. So this is Kwanisha signing off, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Peace and love. Thank you.